Hello and welcome to the Genetic Hemochromatosis GP training webinar. First of all, I would like to thank you for joining this webinar. Today we are going to go through the genetics, the symptoms, primary care investigations, primary care pathways and the ongoing management and treatment of patients with genetic hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis. It's a genetic disorder causing the body to absorb too much iron from the diet and it can be characterized by joint pain and disease, chronic fatigue and weakness, psychological and cognitive difficulties, abnormal liver function, diabetes and cardiomyopathy. Now there are over 380,000 people affected in the UK today. And there are 80 to 90% of these that remain undiagnosed. Now, when we say 380,000 people affected, it's 380,000 people with the genetic predisposition to then go on and overload iron. Now, this is more people than twice the size of Glastonbury. Now we're going to talk about prevalence. So there are one in 150 people directly affected in England and in Wales and 113 people directly affected in Northern Ireland and Scotland. And iron overload can be serious because it can cause disease. Now disease is not inevitable but damage can be caused by iron overload and can often be reversed with treatment when gene once genetic hemochromatosis has been diagnosed. Increased risk from iron overload are four times more likely to develop liver disease, two times more likely to develop arthritis. For every two people with diabetes, three people with iron overload will develop the disease. And for every two people who get pneumonia, three people with iron overload will develop the infection. Now in the whole population, one in five men and one in eight women experience liver disease, cancer, arthritis and diabetes in their life. If we can diagnose people with the genetic predisposition to overload iron, we can prevent these people from being the one in five and the one in eight. Genetic hemochromatosis affects Northern European ancestry types most. It's a recessive genetic condition. You have carriers who are people with one faulty gene and people affected have two. Carriers may be unaffected but can pass hemochromatosis onto their children and people affected are at increased risk of health problems now this is the most common scenario of inheritance. So if one parent has a carrier gene and the other parent has a carrier gene, the child has a 25% chance of having genetic hemochromatosis. They have a 50% chance of two being a carrier and a 25% chance of having neither. Rates of iron overload vary by type. Now the two mutated copies of the HFE gene are located on chromosome number six. There is the C282Y mutated copy. And if you have two copies of this, you are a C282Y homozygote. This is 95% of people with genetic hemochromatosis and they are the highest risk of overloading iron. The C282I H63D or compound heterozygote is 4% of everybody with hemochromatosis and is the second highest risk of iron overload. And the H63D homozygous is little risk of iron overload and is the 1% along with a few rarer mutations of the HFE gene, which continues to have research going into. Now, this is the point where we're going to talk about a case study. 
a 57 year old man attends a clinic. He's had a constant decline in health, but overall in his whole life had good health. Now the constant decline, he reports fatigue, anxiety, dizzy spells, joint pains, particularly in his ankles, stomach pain and memory problems. We will come back to this case study in a few slides time, but I want you just to have a think to see what you would do if this was one of your patients attending your clinic. Common early symptoms. Arthritis, this is one of the most reported symptoms and it may affect any joint, but is particularly common in the knuckles, the first joint or the first two fingers. Chronic fatigue with weakness and reporting that they are tired all the time. Abdominal pain, sometimes in the stomach region or the upper right hand side, sometimes diffuse. Cognitive psychological issues with impaired memory, mood swings, irritability and depression. Sexual disorders such as loss of sex drive and impotence in men. Early menopause in women or absent or irregular periods. The skin may be bronzed, have a permanent tan or have a grey tone. The heart may have diseases of the heart muscle known as cardiomyopathy and later on can cause heart failure. If iron overload has happened in the pancreas, it can cause diabetes. And in the liver, abnormal liver function, enlarged liver, cirrhosis, and is actually equatable to 6% of all liver cancers when undiagnosed. Now the tests that need to be done are serum ferritin and transferrin saturation levels. In men, serum ferritin should be between 15 and 300, so anything over 300 is abnormal. In women, it should be between 15 and 200, and anything over 200 is abnormal. Now, transparent saturation levels should also be tested, and anything over 50% in men and 45% in women is abnormal. Now, other considerations for a high serum ferritin should also be acknowledged. So inflammation, infection, obesity, diseases of the kidneys and liver, malignancy and excess alcohol intake. Now, other tests that may be included with serum ferritin and transferrin saturation levels is a full blood count and liver function tests. Now, going back to the case study, this gentleman actually had his iron studies tested. So his serum ferritin and transferrin saturation levels were tested. His serum ferritin was over 6,500 and his transferrin saturation levels were 96%. He then was able to sit down with his GP and put all his symptoms to genetic hemochromatosis. He went on to have genetic testing and was shown to be a C282Y homozygote. He commenced venesection and his family was tested. When to seek a genetic test? This should be carried out when serum ferritin and transferrin saturation levels are high. Now most labs offer a C282Y and H63D mutation test which is simple, cheap, and as little as 38 pounds. Now, family screening does save lives, as a sibling has a 25% chance of a positive diagnosis. So all first degree relatives should be offered screening. This is a typical patient care pathway. So if a patient presents with joint pain, fatigue, and any unrelated symptom of GH, they should be given a blood test, including serum ferritin test and transferrin saturation levels. Now, if these are abnormal, genetic testing for the C282I and H63D should be done. If it comes back that they are a carrier or have no mutated copies, they should still be referred to hepatology 
if serum ferritin is above 1000, as this could mean they have liver function problems. If it comes back that they are a C282Y homozygote or a C282Y H63D compound heterozygote, they should have referral to hepatology, gastroenterology or hematology, venesection should commence, family screening should be offered along with genetic counselling. Now treatment is simple and effective and venesection is the treatment of choice. This is the removal of blood and it is done in two stages. The iron removal phase is done until serum ferritin levels are within a normal range of 50 to 100. Now this can mean patients are being venesected either twice a week, once a week or every other week until the serum ferritin levels are normal and this can take up to two years. It takes up to two years to remove 10 to 20 grams of excess iron. Now once this has been met, the maintenance phase is reached and this is when the serum ferritin is in with, within normal limits. This means the patient will then need venesecting every three to six months on an ongoing basis and it can be done through the blood donor service. Now venesection can cause people problems. They may be chronically fatigued from the venesection, be needle phobic, have difficulty with accessing venous. So other treatments can be given. The chelating drug is an alternative and is given either orally, intravenously or intramuscularly. Now there are protein pump inhibitors which can also be given to patients with hemochromatosis and they do play a place in the future. They control how much iron is absor absorbed through the diet and can block the absorption, but they can also block the absorption of other vital minerals, uh, vitamins and minerals such as calcium. So dietitians' advice should be sought for these patients. Now for further information, please read the detailed clinical guidelines approved and published by the British Society of Haematology. These can be downloaded from this link at the bottom and from our website. Please share with your patients our leaflets and other resources. And for further information, contact education at huk.org.uk. We are also here to help patients with our advice line. Our fully trained volunteers can provide information, reassurance and advice on a range of topics for both newly diagnosed and people already living with the condition. Now our advice line is open from 9am till 3pm Mondays to Saturdays or we do have an email advice line so patients can email helpline at huk.org.uk. We also can offer face-to-face -face training and have a Royal College of GP accredited e-learning. To access this, please visit the Royal College of GP website. For further information and resources, please contact education at huk.org.uk or to become a member, visit hemochromatosis.org.uk slash join, as together we are stronger. As a member, you will receive a handbook and information pack. If there's any questions, please again email education at huk.org.uk. Thank you for listening.